In this video, I'll take some more examples of anagrams to demonstrate the line technique and the point of symmetry concept. Let's take our first word of the day. Appropriately enough, alpha. As we saw in the last video, the A's can be drawn like this, such that they're symmetrical. That leaves us with L, P and H. H has only two vertical lines no matter how you draw them and L will take only one. To balance out this inequality, I guess we should take the single line form of P. So a point of symmetry is here. See that? Four lines on either side. Which means we can draw H like this such that it looks like an LP. Now let's draw these together. That's an ambigram of the word alpha, which is symmetrical about this point. Now, if you're finding it hard to keep up with this concept, or if you think that it's a little difficult, don't you worry, it's gonna take a little practice. Uh, I would recommend that you start by making an ambigram of your own name or some easy words so that you get a hang of that concept. Let's move on to our next word. Mines. Now we know that I, N and D have to be drawn with one, two and two lines as I've shown here. With S, you can have it in one or two line form and M can come in a two, three or four form. With ambigram design, it's simpler if we try to balance them out right when we begin designing an ambigram. So let's see, let's take the single line form of S, we add that with the two line form of D and we equate it to this. So we have something somewhat like an M, something like a DS. Now this is really simple, but the better you design it, the better it looks. Now we're left with IN, a single and a double word. No matter what I do, I cannot make this I look like a two line N. That looks like a U, so that's not happening. And N cannot be brought to a single line. That does not look like an N. What we can do instead is, instead of taking the point of symmetry inside a letter or between two letters, we can take it on the line of one letter, here. So, we can have an ambigram of IN or IN rather, something like this. We can see that the point of symmetry is at this line. So let's compile all of that, this and this design that we came up with. So that's our ambigram of the word minus. This ambigram demonstrates how your pivot can be on the line of a single letter as well. You see, it's rotating about this point. 
In our previous ambigram, the pivot was not explicitly on any letter. It was be between two letters. In the third example, I'll demonstrate another concept of the point of symmetry. So let's make an ambigram of the word dinosaur. Now in the first glance, it looks like D has two lines and R has two lines. So ideally, we should group these up. Why I'm taking this example is because I'd like to demonstrate to you how imagination intensive ambigram design can be. As I said, in first glance, it seems like we should pair D and R. But if you look at the word R closely enough, This arch looks like a D itself, perhaps with a little modification. And what you're left with is an I. You'll see later that this makes our ambigram really, really simple to make. So instead of the conventional D and R, let's make D, I and R. What are we left with? No saw. N and U are simple. We can make them like that. This looks like a U upside down. Same goes for O and A. There's our O. And that's our A. And flip it over. That's my O. And luckily, S is symmetrical when it's written in its normal form. So let's draw our final ambigram. Again, this is a very, very rough drawing. The more carefully you draw it, the more symmetrical it will appear. There's our ambigram. Dinosaur. This is an example to demonstrate that the line chart that I showed you earlier, this is not your Bible. In fact, the finest ambigrams that I've ever made have not abided by it. But let's say it didn't occur to me. Let's say I didn't realize that I can use this form. And I had to draw the ambigram of dinosaur again. Now this also demonstrates that there are multiple ambigrams possible for a single word. So let's see, on the face of it, I can pick out D and R straight away. Now I'm left with an I, that's a 1, and a U, that's strictly a 2. Now I have sort of an imbalance, so what I intend to do is balance I and O with S, A, U. I start with an I, and I add an extra line to it to make it look like a U. This extra line soon becomes my N. So I complete my N, now I got to start with the A, next to U. That A will be mapped like this. Now the line that I've added next to N becomes my O. And the S that's left, I'll use the one line form to complete the balance. So there we go, I, N, O. Against S, A, U. So let's draw the final ambigram now. Now you can see that this dinosaur is not as legible as the one we made earlier. If I can just pull this up. That's because 
the groups that we made for letters was simpler in the previous hammogram. In this one, I had INO made against SAU, whereas in the previous one, each letter was being mapped to just another letter, the obvious exception being DI and R. Whereas in this case, my groups were larger. So far, we've learned how to make ambigrams of single words. In the next video, we'll explore a concept called multi-word ambigrams.